Recent genetic discoveries and ancient skull morphology have ignited a scientific revolution, challenging old assumptions and connecting the oldest DNA found in Mexico and North America to surprising origins, including potential links to Australasians. What if the history of the first Americans is more complex than we ever imagined? For decades, the prevailing theory suggested that the first humans to populate the Americas arrived via the Bering Land Bridge from Siberia, gradually making their way south. But what if these early settlers were far more diverse than previously believed? In Mexico, even more startling evidence has emerged. Ancient remains found in caves in the Yucatan Peninsula, including those of a young woman known as Naya, date back over 12,000 years. Genetic analysis of Naya's remains revealed that while her skull morphology appeared distinct from modern Native Americans, her DNA firmly placed her within the same genetic lineage. This apparent contradiction between skull shape and genetic heritage has fueled debates over how to interpret the diversity of early American populations. Some scientists argue that the differences in skull morphology suggest that the first Americans arrived in multiple waves, potentially from different parts of the world. Others believe that natural evolutionary changes over thousands of years account for the variation in skull shape without requiring an additional migration event. However, one of the most provocative hypotheses proposes that some of the earliest Americans may have shared distant ancestry with populations from Southeast Asia and even Australia. The idea that some of the first Americans had Australasian ancestry is controversial, but not without merit. Certain ancient skulls found in Brazil, such as those from Lagoa Santa, exhibit features more commonly associated with indigenous Australians and Pacific Islanders than with modern Native Americans. This has led researchers to explore the possibility that an ancient, now extinct population with links to Australasia may have contributed to the early peopling of the Americas. Recent genetic studies have lent some support to this theory. While most ancient American DNA is firmly rooted in Siberian origins, some genetic markers in South American populations suggest a minor but significant connection to populations from the Pacific region. There is a vast Pacific Ocean separating Australasia from the Americas, and we still don't know how these ancestral genetic signals emerged in Central and South America while leaving no trace in North America. Australasian ancestry in the Americas is perplexing because it has been documented for isolated fossil samples, separated by vast distances in location and time, with no discernible pattern. While the study's findings shed new light on the migrations and ancestry of these early inhabitants, they also suggest that the region's genetic history is much more complex than scientists previously believed. How could such a link have formed? One possibility is that an early seafaring group made the journey across the Pacific or along the coasts of the Americas thousands of years before the Clovis culture emerged. While the evidence remains incomplete, some researchers point to archaeological finds in South America that predate the earliest North American sites, suggesting that early humans may have arrived in unexpected ways. The complexity of ancient DNA in Mexico and North America challenges the traditional model of a single migration from Siberia, Instead, the evidence points to multiple waves of migration, regional adaptations, and a dynamic population history. The genetic continuity between ancient remains like the Anzic Boy, Spirit Cave, and Naya, with modern Native Americans, affirms the deep roots of indigenous peoples in the Americas. However, the variations in skull morphology and hints of distant genetic connections to Australasia add layers of intrigue to this unfolding story. Adding to this complexity is the genetic history of the Olmecs, one of the earliest Mesoamerican civilizations. While little direct Olmec DNA has been recovered, studies of ancient Mesoamerican populations suggest a strong genetic continuity between the Olmecs and later groups, such as the Maya and the Aztec. This continuity supports the idea that the Olmecs were part of a long-established indigenous lineage that had deep roots in the region for thousands of years. The Olmecs are the oldest major civilization in Mesoamerica, flourishing in the modern-day Mexican states of Veracruz and Tabasco. Understanding their genetic makeup offers insights into their origins, adaptations and connections to modern Latin Americans. The Olmecs contributed genetically to subsequent Mesoamerican civilizations, such as the Maya and Aztec, as suggested by cultural continuities like the ball game and ritual bloodletting. Their DNA didn't care about borders. It spread through Mexico like salsa on a tortilla. 
The most direct evidence of ancient Olmec DNA comes from a pioneering study of mitochondrial DNA conducted on human remains from two Olmec sites, San Lorenzo Tenochtitlan and Loma del Zapote. This research analyzed bone samples from two burials at the sites. The study successfully sequenced mitochondrial DNA focusing on the maternal lineage and found that both individuals unequivocally belong to haplogroup A. This haplogroup is one of the five mitochondrial haplogroups characteristic of indigenous populations of the Americas, with haplogroup A being the most abundant. What does this tell us about the Olmec's origins? The presence of haplogroup A strongly supports the consensus among Mesoamerican researchers that the Olmecs were indigenous to the New World, with no reliable evidence of extra-hemispheric influences such as African, Asian or European ancestry prior to 1492. This finding aligns with archaeological evidence of a local cultural heritage that developed independently in the Gulf Coast lowlands. If you like to refer to this gulf as Gulf of Mexico or Gulf of America, let me know in the comments. A related study on remains from Puyol Cave in Tabasco, Mexico, further corroborates this indigenous ancestry. Using next-generation sequencing, researchers dated the remains to the Archaic and Classic periods and identified mitochondrial DNA haplogroups consistent with pre-Columbian Mesoamerican populations, including those associated with Olmec and Maya ancestors. The Olmec mitochondrial DNA haplogroup A aligns with the founding lineages of Native Americans, supporting a migration from East Asia via Beringia. This reinforces the idea that the Olmecs shared a maternal lineage with other indigenous groups, descending from early migrations into the Americas via the Beringia land bridge around 20,000 years ago. Linguistically, some researchers have explored possible links between the Olmec language and later Mesoamerican languages, although definitive connections remain speculative. Linguistic analysis also provides fascinating insights into ancient population movements, the Uto-Aztecan language family, which includes Nahuatl, the language of the Aztecs, and languages spoken by indigenous groups in the American Southwest, suggests deep historical connections between Mesoamerica and regions as far north as Utah and California. This linguistic link supports the idea that cultural and genetic exchanges occurred over thousands of years, with migrations, trade and shared traditions shaping the development of diverse indigenous societies across North America. One of the most astonishing genetic discoveries in North America comes from the remains of the Anzic boy, a child buried nearly 12,600 years ago in Montana. Found with elaborate burial offerings, the Anzic boy provided the first ancient genome of an early American. His DNA closely matches that of modern indigenous groups in the Americas, confirming that today's Native American populations are direct descendants of these early settlers. Yet the Anzic boy's genome does not tell the whole story. Other ancient remains, such as those from Spirit Cave in Nevada and the oldest DNA from Mexico, suggest a deeper complexity in the population history of the Americas. The Spirit Cave mummy, discovered in the late 1940s in Nevada, initially puzzled scientists due to its unusual skull shape. Early theories suggested that the individual may have belonged to a completely separate lineage, distinct from Native Americans. For years, there was speculation that these remains indicated a lost people unrelated to modern indigenous groups. However, DNA analysis of the spirit cave mummy revealed that despite its cranial differences, the individual was indeed genetically linked to contemporary Native American populations. This discovery was a game-changer. It showed that early Americans were not a homogenous group, but exhibited significant physical diversity while still belonging to the broader indigenous gene pool. Another significant discovery, adding to the complexity of early American populations, is Kennewick Man, whose remains were found along the Columbia River in Washington State in 1996. Initially, his skull shape led some researchers to speculate that he was unrelated to modern Native Americans and possibly had European or Ainu ancestry. This sparked a long legal and scientific battle over his remains. However, when genetic testing was finally conducted, the results revealed that Kennewick Man's DNA was unmistakably Native American. His closest modern relatives were indigenous groups of the Pacific Northwest, confirming his deep ancestral ties to the Americas. This finding further reinforced the idea that skull morphology alone is not a reliable indicator of ancestry, 
and that the first Americans were more physically diverse than previously assumed. As scientists continue to extract and analyze ancient DNA, new discoveries will likely reshape our understanding of the first Americans. The past is far from settled, and with each new genetic revelation, we are forced to reconsider the incredible journey of the earliest humans in the new world. Could the first Americans have been more diverse, more interconnected, and more adventurous than we ever imagined? The answers may lie hidden in the DNA of the ancient bones resting beneath the soils of Latin America and beyond. But here's one more interesting fact. The term Latin America was actually invented by the French. The term Amérique Latine was popularized by French intellectuals and Napoleon III in the mid-19th century. France sought influence in the Americas, especially during its intervention in Mexico 160 years ago, and promoted the idea that the region was culturally linked to France because of shared Latin linguistic roots. Yep, the French. In the 1860s, Emperor Napoleon III was looking to justify his invasion of Mexico. He argued that Mexico and much of South America were Latin nations due to their Romance language origins and should therefore be part of France's sphere of influence. This wasn't just a matter of semantics, it was part of a full-scale French attempt to colonize Mexico and establish a puppet empire. One of the most famous episodes of French involvement in Mexico was Napoleon III's attempt to establish a French-backed monarchy in the country. However, ancient DNA didn't care about borders. It spread through the Americas like salsa on a tortilla.